Okay, so with this video, I'm going to break down the TOK essay prescribed title number one for the 2025 May examination. So the first prescribed title is Do historians and human scientists have an ethical obligation to follow the directive? Do not ignore contradictory evidence. Discuss with the reference to history and the human science, right? So let's break down this prescribed title first, okay, before moving into the outline. So do historians and human scientists have an ethical obligation to follow the directive? Do not ignore contradictory evidence. So there are two focus words that you have to think about with this title. First one is ethical consideration. This is the first focus word. And contradictory evidence is the second one. However, contradictory evidence is not as important as the, the first one, the ethical obligation. Okay, uh, when you're choosing the example, you have to focus on the ethical obligation. So I'm going to talk more about it uh, in a minute and discuss with the reference to history and the human science. So to write essay for this topic, you have to use the AOK history and the human science, right? So history is your AOK number one, human science is your AOK number two. Okay, then let's talk about the knowledge framework that you probably going to use to write this essay, okay? So there are four elements with the knowledge framework, right? They are scope, perspective, methods, and tools, and ethics, right? So you probably need to use all these four elements to choose your example and to write your essay. However, with this essay, what you need to focus the most is the ethics element of this knowledge framework, okay? So I borrowed this table from the IB website. So if you look at the ethics box, the first line says the focus on exploring ethics, the ethical considerations that have an impact on inquiry in the different themes and area of knowledge, right? It's, this first line is related to ethical obligation that the prescribed title is mentioning, right? Uh, do human scientists have to follow the ethical obligation during their inquiry process? That's what you need to think about it, right? And also, second, if you look at the second line, it says they include aspects such as the relationship between the facts, values, how ethical or epistemic values are built into the quest of knowledge. This is the line that you have to think about when you choosing your examples, okay? And include questions relating to knowledge and inequality and injustice. This is the line that you need to think about when you're writing your conclusion. So let's re write it out, right? So third line or the last line is for the conclusion. Second guide is for your example. The first line is for your introduction, right? If you put it in this way, it will be much easier to understand, okay? Then let's talk about how am I going to use this ethics element in my essay outline. So first thing, the introduction. Uh, the first line of your introduction is uh, interesting about the prescribed title, right? So write interesting about the prescribed title as your first sentence of your introduction. After that, define key terms in the title. However, for this essay, okay, it will be better to define what ethical obligation mean in each AOK. So in each AOK means history, right, and human science. Why I'm saying, that, saying this? Because the ethical obligation is different. What is mean by the ethical obligation is different in human science and history. Why I'm saying it's different because how this AOKs identifies the ethical obligation is different based on what they're aiming for, right? So you're going to identify what ethical obligation is for your each AOKs, okay, in the introduction. And after that, you're going to state your thesis statement, okay? Means you're going to identify what you think, like how you think about this 
title, and then you want to identify your answer for this title, right? After that, lastly, in the introduction, okay, you're going to give uh, a the reader a roadmap. When I say roadmap, means you're just going to uh, give a brief guideline of how you're going to uh, answer the prescript title using this tool AOKs. Okay, so by doing this, uh, you are clarifying your intention to the reader about how you're going to explore the essay question. Okay, then since we have discussed the introduction, let's talk about the remaining parts of your essay. Okay, so let's talk about the format. So we already talked about introduction, right? Uh, the next thing should be your first A, okay? So here I wrote a history, right? Uh, with the history, you're going to identify your claim, counterclaim, and sub-conclusion. Okay, sub conclusion is quite important, right? Because you're kind of wrapping up what you're discussing with the first AOK. After that, you're going to identify your second AOK with this title, it is human science, and you're going to identify your claim, counterclaim, and then again, sub conclusion. And finally, you're going to finish up your essay with a conclusion. Okay, so let's keep this in our mind. Uh, I'm going to talk about the AOK1 and AOK2. So first AOK, history. Okay, Your claim is going to be, yes, historians have an ethical obligation to not ignore contradictory evidence because your reasoning, right? Don't forget your reasoning. Your counterclaim is going to be, no, historians have an ethical obligation to not ignore contradictory evidence because your reasoning. So when you're developing your reasoning, you need to think about how ethical obligation can be taken in the history and what happens if one ignores the contradictory evidence or what happens if one do not ignore contradictory evidence, okay? So the mini conclusion for the history part, here I wrote it mini, but it's actually sub-conclusion. That's how I used it with the previous slide, right? Uh, with this, you must identify what we learned about the ethical obligation regards the do not ignore contradictory evidence from the examples and give analytical statement that says that I have researched this and therefore I conclude this, right? Like that's you know really based on how you're going to interpret your example but that's the format that you need to think uh, or you have to use for your sub-conclusion then let's talk about the human science human science is same thing okay uh, you're going to have a claim saying yes human scientists have an ethical obligation to not ignore contradictory evidence because your reasoning right counterclaim no human scientists have an ethical obligation to not ignore contradictory evidence because your reasoning, right? And also you need to think about how ethical obligation can be taken into human science and what happens if one ignore contradictory evidence and what happens if one do not ignore contradictory evidence. And then for the uh, mini or sub-conclusion, uh, same as history, you must identify what we learned about the ethical obligation regards the do not ignore contradictory evidence from the examples and give analytical statement that says I have researched this and therefore I conclude this, right? You're, op you're concluding your opinion. That's what you should have for your sub-conclusion. Then finally, let's talk about the conclusion. So your conclusion must include a lesson statement position or insight about ethical obligation by analyzing the example of your choice and this is this is more of the summary of the two sub conclusion you had but also including this okay so comment on the nature of the ethical obligation that and why it is or isn't good and is ethical obligation avoidable should we try to avoid it if not what have we learned and what are the difference between two AOKs or are they giving the same lesson? So these things, it's like, you know, you have to use a different thing based on your answer, right? If your answer is yes, you're definitely going to go talk about, you know, uh, 
What are the differences between two AFKs or are they giving the same lesson? Your answer is no. Is the ethical obligation avoidable? Should we try to avoid it? If not, what have we learned? You know, depends on depends on your plan for this essay. Uh, your conclusion should have a different critical analyzation. Okay, so these questions are just a few examples that you can use to develop your critical analyzation. Then let's finally talk about the TOK essay from number one examples. So when you are researching for evidence, think about the original or transitional narrative of the example or even the contradictory evidence first, okay? Then think about the contradictory evidence if you first came up with the original or transitional narrative or the emerging new evidences if you came uh, first with the contradictory evidence. And then finally, think about the ethical obligation of the historian or human scientist with those examples, okay? So a few examples that you can discuss or use in your essay are the Holocaust denial and revisionism. Oh, you know, this is the both history and human science. Uh, this is also a World War II example. There are quite other stuff that you can use from the World War II, like, you know, Soviet Union or what Japanese do did or like imperial Japanese did. Those are the examples that you can use. You know, so clim with the climate change and environmental history, uh, I am actually was thinking about the human science ones, right? So people used to ignore the this effect or the changes they're making with the climate because they are more focused on the economic growth, right? Uh, so that can be a good example for human science. And Tuskish sloppy study, this is also human science. And also the Cold War and the, the role of the espionage, this is a history example again. And the eugenics in modern society, human science. I mean, this is quite be a uh, interesting example if you can put this up, but there's not a lot of examples that you can use or the primary resources you can use. Uh, for this uh, example, so you might need to spend a lot of time like researching, just researching on the primary uh, resources, okay? And then lastly, the discovery of the Americas and indigenous populations. And this is also part of the history example, okay? Then I'm just going to show you how to develop these examples, okay? So let's say we are doing a discovery of the Americas indigenous population. We do all know that the Columbus found the, the land of America, right? Uh, however, you know, the transitional narrative about this Columbus or the or the you know about these Europeans who were exploring around this American, you know, land, North and South American land nowadays, um uh, or heroes. That's how we are uh, used to, like you know, wrap them up. You know. Uh, however, there has been a lot of a contradictory evidence over time, right? We now know that the Columbus not just found the land America, right? He uh, caused a lot of uh, damages with the native people who used to live there, right? Uh, there was a mass. Uh, deaths, killing, violence, and disease, uh, forced convergence and culture like destruction. It was not like you know Pocahontas, you know, meeting the these new people. It, there was more of the story behind that, right? So the contradictory evidence has found. So now the historians actually have to follow their ethical obligations, right? So historians have a duty to integrate this evidence into the broader narrative, acknowledging the complexity and the consequences of the European colonization rather than perpetuating one side story than the glorifies the colonizers, right? So that can be a good example for history. And that's it for the title number one. And I'm going to post the title number two video in a few days. Thank you for watching. And if you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. Thank you.